Hey everyone, welcome back to the Prime 5, where we give you the five biggest news stories for video games in the last 24 hours. Today we have Sony doing something extremely anti-consumer, maybe not a shocker to some of you. We also have some Breath of the Wild 2 rumors fresh off the mill, and it comes from a fairly reliable source, I can't wait to dive into that. And so much more, there was a Nintendo Treehouse, we got BPM, what the hell are we talking about? I don't know, but let's get right into the news. You are watching Nintendo Prime, and at this channel on Monday through Friday, we drop five videos going over the five latest stories in the last 24 hours revolving around Nintendo, the biggest of those stories. We also, on the weekends, end up dropping other types of content, including unboxings and Prime Answers episode that goes out every single Saturday where we answer all of your questions. Questions. If you enjoy Nintendo news and you want to get the latest updates, all you need to do is subscribe to Nintendo Prime. Our first story today actually deals with Sony hiking the price of the PlayStation 5 in essentially every territory about the United States. I'm not kidding. They're increasing it by 20%. What is happening? Let's get to what Sony had to say on this matter. The global economic environment is a challenge that many of you around the world are no doubt experiencing. We're seeing high global inflation rates as well as adverse currency trends impacting consumers and creating pressure on many industries. Based on these challenging economic conditions, Sony Interactive Entertainment has made the difficult decision to increase the recommended retail price of PlayStation 5, this is the all digital and disc version, in select markets across Europe, Middle East, and Africa. Wait, they're not done. Also Asia Pacific, Latin America, and Canada. There will be no price increase in the United States. Now, here's some notes I made about this because it's rather interesting. Sony did announce less than a year ago that the disc version of PlayStation 5 was profitable per sale without selling a game. But Sony has traditionally sold their systems at a loss for several years, typically until the slim version comes out. With Sony saying they have to do this due to inflation, they also fail to realize that inflation also means consumers have less money to spend. Remember, Sony is the only console manufacturer trying to push a new $70 price for games as st a standard. It's very hard to feel like they aren't doing this to take advantage of the high demand for the system, because if they didn't have such a high demand, they probably couldn't get away with this price hike. Not inflating it in the US as well is also a slap to all other regions that are seeing this increase, as the US is getting special treatment likely due entirely to the fact they don't want to be more expensive than the Xbox Series X in its major selling territory. Naturally, this just comes off as extremely anti-consumer. No one should feel bad for Sony. They might be making less money per PS5 than they were a year ago. That's bound to happen. But also, Sony is a $100 billion company. No one needs to feel bad for a company like that. Basically, Sony feels like they're scalping their own systems. That never leaves a good taste in your mouth. This next story is actually about a brand new game coming to Switch on September 8th. That's right, the day before I'm spreading my ink all over the place and splatting every single one of you in BPM. So BPM, aka Bullets Per Minute, is launching on Switch on September 8th. It's developed by AWE Interactive and originally released back in 2020. The game takes inspiration from old school games like Duke Nukem and the original Doom, while throwing in rhythm elements and dungeons to the table. This version of the game has five brand new characters characters, three new weapons, and a new chapter with its own unique enemies. There's going to be two new difficulty choices, new items, achievements, and various gameplay tweaks. I just thought this game looked really cool and it's going to be added to my must-buy list. Next up, the Nintendo Treehouse Live happened and it kind of sort of came and went. Now, there are two big games they showed off in Splatoon 3 and we'll start with that one. With Splatoon 3, they showed off some single player and they tried to show multiplayer tips. I'm going to be honest, you can just skip the multiplayer tip section. So if you're going to go watch Treehouse Live, watch the first half hour and the last half hour, skip the middle. They didn't really show us anything there. But they did show us a few of the stages from single player, which some of them looked pretty cool, but they didn't really dive too in depth. They said it was going to be a deep dive and it didn't really feel like a deep dive. 
Honestly, the Splatoon 3 content is pretty skippable from what they showed in general. However, the last half hour, they did show off Harvest Stella. They showed off a lot more complexities with the game in comparison to Rune Factory and Story of Seasons, other games that are, exist in its genre. Remember, this is a Switch exclusive. It is developed by Square Enix. It did look really, really pretty. The soundtrack sounded really well. It did look like they were playing the game on easy mode, but hey... You know what? Harvest Stella actually looks pretty solid for people that would be into that type of game. So, hey, why not go drop a pre-order? In fact, we'll put a pre-order link down in the description. But, hey, we're not done talking about Splatoon 3 because we have one more bit of news that is sort of exciting, especially if you live in the Seattle, Washington area. And that is because Splatoon 3 is coming to PAX West. And you're going to get to play a demo of the multiplayer Turf War mode. You do need a warp pipe pass to play but those are completely free to get off of nintendo's website we'll put a link down in the description to get the warp pipe pass this is actually something they've done similarly at other pax events and e3 in the past as well so go hey it's just another chance to play splatoon 3 besides this weekend before the game comes out and our last story actually deals with some breath of the wild 2 rumors so Buckle up, get your tinfoil hat, put on your Superman capes, and let's fly into the skies of Breath of the Wild 2. So, this comes from Tyler McVicker, who runs Valve News Network and has his own YouTube channel with over 300,000 subscribers. Reportedly, he was actually going to open up a Nintendo News Network at some point, but it never actually quite got off the ground. He is well known for his Valve, Microsoft, and Rockstar leaks, and is considered reliable by those that pay attention. Now, personally, this is just a disclaimer, I don't really cover rumors for those companies, so I'm only aware of him in name, so I've heard of him, but I can't actually vouch for anything he says. But enough people that do pay attention to them have told me that it's at least worth covering. I warn you, this stuff is considered spoilers if it's true. So if you do, don't want spoilers for Breath of the Wild 2, maybe just skip this section. Here is what he said, and this was said two years ago. It just kind of flew under the radar. Unlike the first game, Breath of the Wild 2 will be linear at the beginning. Canonically, Link already knows Hyrule, so there is no point in climbing towers again. Instead, the developers have filled the world with a miasmic version of Ganon, and until the infection is cleared from location to location, it will be impossible to move around the entire Hyrule. In this regard, the locations are worked out much deeper than in the original. At the very least, McVicker hints at the appearance of dungeons, strongly inspired by one game that knows a lot about spreading dungeons around the open world. In general, while designing the world of Breath of the Wild 2, Developers were inspired by Red Dead Redemption 2 and another unknown game. Now, naturally, the big thing to take away is dungeons. If that's the, the room here. Dungeons are back and spread all throughout the overworld. The whole miasmic Ganon spread all over the world. That sounds a lot, a lot like the stuff we dealt with uh, in Breath of the Wild. So I'm not really sure how this is magically different than what we got in Breath of the Wild. Feels like a repeated mechanic, but maybe there's a story element. Maybe this is completely different. Maybe this isn't like getting rid of the black goo that we got rid of in Breath of the Wild. Maybe it's something entirely new. But naturally for me, the most exciting part of this, where dungeons are back. And this is the first rumor we've really had that's stated as much. And I know it's from two years ago, but we're covering it today because it was in my inbox. It was submitted to me by several people. I know Game Over Jesse recently covered it as well. And, you know, this person seems at least semi-reliable. So I thought it was worth talking about for today. Now, everyone, I am Nathaniel Rumpeljantz from Nintendo Prime. I want to thank you guys so much for tuning into the Prime 5. And we'll catch you guys in the next video.